pin curls. Hello, welcome to Lady in Waking. Today we are doing pin curls. Um, first of all, if you've never been here before, this is a channel dedicated to vintage beauty over 40. How do you work it? What do you do with it? we're kind of figuring it out together. So that's what this channel is all about. If that looks like it's something that you're interested in or if vintage technique and style is your interest in general, then by all means, subscribe, comment, rate, all of that's gonna really help keep my channel up in the alg algorithm and I could not be more thankful. So what we're talking about today is pin curls. This was requested on my Facebook poll or on my Instagram poll recently. Um, this past week, everyone chose pin curls. Most people chose pin curls. So we're going to go ahead and do pin curls. And, uh, first of all, we're going to talk about what they are. I'm going to post a few pictures here of some ladies pin curling. Pin curling was the principal set that was used in the thirties, forties, specifically the thirties and forties for a vintage curl, a vintage hairstyle. So most of these gorgeous, shiny, bouncy waves that you see in 1940s and 1930s films, um, even the frizzy, the frizzy looks from the 1930s were typically achieved with pin curls. Some of my favorites are Betty Grable, mm, beautiful hair, um, Ann Miller. Ann Miller is someone that I feel like people don't recognize often enough for having the most gorgeous head of hair, but her hair was really curly. So pin curls work for both straight or curly hair. And Ann Miller was a perfect example of someone who they they worked her hair into pin curls and completely restructured the curl that she naturally had and that's one of the things that makes pin curls so great they probably had to brush her hair i think i read somewhere that that curly haired ladies like her t typically their stylist would brush for around 40 minutes but that's how long it took to main to redirect and restructure the curls that they had if they were very very strong curls so that's definitely something that um that is to take into account is is the if you have curly or long hair or curly curly or or uh, straight hair your your process is going to be different and more time consuming if you have curly hair but either way nothing looks like a pin curl set I feel like it's the bounciest most vintage set that I usually get and once I put it on my hair I always wonder why why do I not do this more often um, but it does take a little longer and we'll talk about that soon. To do a pin curl set, all you're going to need are about three items. You're going to need duckbill clips. You can use the single pronged or the double pronged kind. I don't know why I don't have more single prong, but double pronged. The double prong is a little bit trickier. The single prong just slips right in. The double prong sometimes gets caught. So keep that in mind. Um, another thing you'll need is a setting lotion. What I used for this set was the Miss Curlette setting spray. Um, this is for smooth lasting curls. I got this on vintagehairstyling.com. I don't know if there's any on there right now and I have had some difficulty finding it since, but I actually use it diluted in a water bottle or in a little spray bottle filled with water. It's about 50-50, so I dilute that. Um, and then I just spray each section, as you'll see in the video, and pin curl it up. Um, you actually create the curl, wind it up, and fasten it to your head, and that's it. I also use Motions Foaming Lap Wrap Lotion when I do not have the Miss Curlette. This I use on my hair while it's damp, and then I will dry my hair completely and then re-moisten it with water only. I cannot pin curl my hair when it is very wet because not only does it sometimes not completely dry, but also the frizz factor is so much more pronounced that it takes so much longer to style that I just figure why. Um, so that's pretty much all you need. Setting lotion, pin curl clips, and uh, some kind of net to put over your hair when you're resting or when you're sleeping. The net just kind of sort of keeps it in place if you decide to sleep on the set. And surprisingly, they are not that uncomfortable to sleep on. So give it a try. So we're gonna show you the actual process. Then we're gonna show you the brush out. You're gonna show you this style. Um, and then I'm gonna come back and talk about some pros and cons. So I'll see you in just a little bit. So for this basic pin curl set, I am starting with clean dry hair and I am going to be parting it in the middle. You can actually do this with your hair parted on the side or in the middle. And I will do another set in the future where I'll be re-rolling pin curls up for longevity and we'll do that on a different video. But right now we're just starting with the basics. I'm going to saturate each strand and I just sort of do those by feel. It's uh, usually about an inch strand. And then I loop the end around one finger and I only use one finger 
Um, some people will use two. If you've got curlier hair, you may want to start with two fingers, but I get more longevity if I use one because my hair is so fine and straight. So I usually just do one finger. And I usually wrap it around the end on one finger, loop the end, and then take the side of that curl and just sort of wind it into a disc and sit it on top of my head. Now, some people do stand-up pin curls on top. I do not. I have never enjoyed doing stand-up pin curls, so this is the only type of pin curl I do, but you can absolutely roll them in and then stand them up with them sticking up, especially on top, and that will give you more volume. But this is just my basic flat pin curl set. So I usually go from one side to the other, and I will just take each little section, spray it, loop the end around one finger, then take the side of that curl, and just wind it into a disc on top of the base of the hair that I've just grabbed. And I usually place the clip inside the curl because that is gonna give it the, um, the best staying power, but also it keeps it out of the way of the other curls as you're setting them. So I usually do that until I get the entire sides of my hair done, and then I will split my hair in the back just like I do with my roller sets, and I just do the back to the best of my ability. Now, I don't do directional pin curls typically because that's that takes a lot of extra time and I'm usually just wanting a good vintage curl so I don't necessarily roll them both direction um, both the same direction you'll notice that on one side my I roll towards my face and on the other side I roll away from my face and I only do that because it's easier not because there's any specific strategy to it um, but I've never been unhappy with the way that turns out, so that's the way I generally do a pin curl set when I'm just doing a basic set. So after I've gotten all the pin curls placed, then what I'm going to do is take my bangs and part them in the middle and use a very small roller and a bobby pin to set my bangs. And this is the next morning. I'm going to let the curls drop naturally. Sometimes I wind them a little bit to keep them separated just to see how they're falling. And I'll take the clips out carefully. You will definitely see one of them snag. Almost always there is one that snags. And it takes a little bit of doing to get it untangled. But it's something about the clip part at the, the actual joint of the clip. Sometimes hair gets wrapped in there. So, yep. So it's a little bit of a process getting that untangled. And after all the curls are unwound... Then I will go ahead and shake them out. I'm sorry I had to edit here, but I just don't have enough time on my YouTube channel to uh, make this a super long real-time video. So had to edit a little bit of it out. But basically all I did is just took all of those pin curl clips out, and then I am brushing each section out individually with my Denman brush. The Denman brush is my favorite for brushing through a pin curl set because they are sturdier curls, and you will see some major frizz go on when you first brush through them, especially if your hair has some wave to it or some curl and coarseness to it. You will notice a lot of frizz to start with. And the curlier your hair is, the more brushing you will have to do to brush past that frizz, but that's what you do. You basically just keep brushing until the frizz disappears and you will see that happen and it will be magic and you will be so happy. And then I'm going to pin down my bangs to keep them out of the way for now. I'm going to get back to them later and then I'll take my curl shaper brush from Lauren Reynolds and I will actually brush all of the hair into submission and I usually use a hairspray um, with my hair being as dry as it is right now I probably could have stood to actually put a pomade on my hands while I did this that will really help tame that frizz as you're trying to brush past it but you can see that bounce come in it's so nice when it happens and you're just gonna brush against your hand, using your hand as a tool, it's your main tool, and just brush around and against your hand until you see the proper amount of brush out and bounce that you want. And you can keep brushing if you want this to be more structured. I wanted a little bit of fluff in there. And then for this particular style, I'm just gonna tease these little bang portions that I have here and sort of blend them in with the side hair. And I'm doing that by using one of Lauren Reynolds' tiny little grip tooth combs. Actually, they're not her grip tooth combs, but she does sell them on her site. And I'm using the little small grip tooth combs to sort of pin back the side in with the bangs. So I wish that I could have been more specific with that. I should have shown you the other side instead of that side because it wasn't as specific as it could have been. But really, I just took the bangs and included them in with the side hair. And that's it. And I do miss this Shine Spray by Vintage Glam. It's wonderful. I hate that it's gone. 
But yeah, I usually use a little shine spray afterwards to give it that nice 1940s bam. But that's the way this set turned out. I was very happy with it. It looked good on my freshly curled and or my freshly colored hair. So, so pros. Let's talk about pros first of all. The look of a pin curl set to me is the most authentic look that you can get if you're trying to do vintage styles, especially 1940s styles like victory rolls, page boys, things like that. I feel like they generally just look a little more bouncy and sturdy. Um, they tend to be very forgiving. Um, you can, it, there's a coarseness that remains in your hair after you brush through the frizz that when you have fine, thin, straight hair like me, nothing else gives you that. It's like a, a, ver a moldability factor. And so if I'm gonna do um, foam, if I'm gonna do victory rolls or if I'm gonna do some kind of really elaborate hairstyle, I, gen I, I do tend to like a pin curl set for that because my hair is more moldable and it's easier, like if I tease it, it just stays better. So it just gives your hair texture. So those are two of the things that I think are the most significant pros to a pin curl set. Um, unfortunately, the cons slightly outweigh the pose, pros, but those two pros are so magnificent that it's worth it still. I definitely think everyone should try it. The cons are the time factor. A roller set will typically take me 15 to 20 minutes at the most. A pin curl set, usually it takes between 30 and 40 minutes because I, I try to keep um, I try to be as as deliberate as possible with the roll. Um, this is actually called the sculpture pin curl what we're doing. You do have to make sure you wind it into that curl shape with the inside, the end of the curl inside or it just loses a lot of the authenticity and you'll end up with a lot of crimping in the set. Um, another con is the duckbill clips. I have never had a single set where one doesn't get stuck. Um, tends to be kind of a pain to get out and you will see that happen in you probably saw that happen in the video it's unfortunate it happens another con is the brush out time the brush out time for a pin curl set I believe is far more significant um, and if you have curly hair it's going to be even more significant also because of the frizz and because of the 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 texture that it gives your hair you may have to coat your hands with a pomade or do something to kind of maintain that a little bit more than you would have to with another type of roller set um, uh, another thing that makes a pin curl set it, it's more challenging it is definitely more difficult than using rollers and there have been a lot of girls that have given up on it i was one of them i did a pin curl set for the first time here for my channel in 2009 um, that was the lisa fremont street treat channel you may or may not know about and I actually did a pin curl set and could not get rid of the frizz and washed it out, did not even think about doing it again for probably a year. After about a year, I saw some pictures of Marilyn Monroe with her pin curl set. I'm gonna see if I can post them somewhere here. And I was like, that's pin curls after she already pin curled. Like, I think she puts her hair back into pin curls after she styled it. And that keeps her hair in pin curls, even though wow even though she didn't wash her hair so she can maintain it longer and i was like well i need to try it again so i tried it again this time it worked out really well so i've kind of been practicing it for years but it is more of a challenge do not do your first pin curl set before you go out for the night let's just say we'll put it that way girls with long hair will have more difficulty with a pin curl set because the way that it has to work is you're 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 rolling in the pin curl and mine are sloppy so I'll be the first to say it I'm not like super specific if you're doing it on someone else's head you can really really block out those sections and make everything look perfect like Lauren Reynolds does in her books I'm doing them on myself so it's a little more difficult but either way it is gonna have to sit directly on the base of the hair that you're curling in and unfortunately the longer hair that you have the more those curls are sort of gonna overlap it is possible to do pin curls on long hair, but it's going to be a very big challenge because that curl is gonna to have to sit flat on the head. Now, if you are doing a stand-up pin curl all over your head, that's a completely different situation. I don't do those. Um, I find they get crushed when I sleep on them and I'm too, I don't, I tend to only style my hair to sleep on. So I don't do stand-up pin curls to sleep on ever, so therefore I don't do stand-up pin curls, if that makes sense. Hopefully this was helpful to those of you who asked for it. So if you have requests, leave them below, and I can't wait to see you next time.